Imagine solar panels so powerful, so flexible, and so cheap it could turn windows into power generators. It could coat your phone to charge itself and revolutionize how we power our homes. I know a lot of you will say this sounds like a sci-fi movie, but it's not. It's real, and it's called perovskite. Being in the renewable energy sector for many, many years, I've been following this technology. And what I'm seeing right now is absolutely mind-blowing. We're talking about solar cells that could disrupt the multi-hundred billion dollar global solar industry and change everything we know about solar energy. <music> Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are diving deep into perovskite solar cells, what they are, why scientists are obsessed with them, and how they could potentially change the game completely. Now make sure to stick around because by the end of this video, you will understand why perovskites might be the biggest energy breakthrough since silicon. We're going to cover how these materials actually work, compare them to traditional silicon solar panels, look at the real companies already deploying this technology right now, not in 10 years, but today and we'll also dive into the challenges that still need to be solved this topic goes definitely beyond a 10 minute video so i'll make sure to dive deeper into various aspects of perovskite's technology in the upcoming content as well make sure to leave them some comments with ideas after you watch this video and give me some feedback on the way i do these videos now if you like this one make sure to subscribe to the channel as well so that you do not miss out on future energy breakthroughs and it helps me so much so thank you Speaking of, since the 30% tax credit could potentially be gone before the end of the year, now is the time to look into solar pricing or storage pricing as well. So if you're in the DFW area, make sure to reach out to me. My contact information is gonna be in the description below. But if you're not in Dallas area, I can help you find a local installer in your area that is reputable. So you have my contact in the description. But now let's get back to the video. So let's start with the basics. Perovskite isn't just a single material. It's a whole class of materials that share a specific crystal structure. The perovskite mineral, calcium titanate, I can't say that word in English, I try. <laughs> but it was discovered in 1839 in the Ural Mountains and named after a Russian mineralogist, L.A. Perovsky. For well over a century after that, this class of materials was primarily of academic interest only, studied for their unique properties, but not not really widely considered for any groundbreaking applications like solar energy. It wasn't until 2009 that researchers made the initial step demonstrating that organic lead halide perovskite could indeed absorb light and convert it into electricity, though with a pretty modest efficiency, and I mean pretty low, at 3.8 PCE. However, the turning point is when the perovskite started gaining sufficient traction was actually in 2012. A major breakthrough that year involving the use of solid state components dramatically boosted efficiency and stability and started a unique rush of research and development. Since then, the progress has been pretty explosive. These modern synthetic versions, typically a mix of lead, halide, and organic compounds, can absorb light incredibly well and turn it into electricity far more efficiently than traditional silicon and at a fraction of the cost. To put it simply, perovskites are like a solar equivalent of going from dial-up internet to 5G overnight. They're lighter, cheaper, easier to produce, and far more versatile than the stiff, heavy silicon panels that we see on the rooftops today. So let's compare the absorption efficiency between silicon and perovskite. So lab tests have shown single junction perovskites reaching over 26.7% efficiency, matching the best silicon cells. And when combined both in tandem solar cells, that number jumps past 34%. That's huge. For contest, the most residential solar panels I installed today operate at around 20 to 22% efficiency. So we're talking about a significant jump in power generation from the same amount of footprint. So what's the catch? I will get there, I promise. Now, 
Here's where it gets really interesting. Unlike silicon, which requires high temperature processing and expensive equipment, perovskites can be made using low temperature, low cost methods like inject printing, spray coating, or roll to roll manufacturing, similar to how newspapers are printed. Now, this means that factories could literally print solar panels onto flexible plastic or glass. It opens up an incredible design freedom, solar windows, solar backpacks, solar cars, solar clothing. So let's break down how these are actually made. So one method involves layering specialized materials on a substrate typically glass coated with a transparent conductive layer. First, an electron transport layer like titanium dioxide is applied to help move electrons. Then a solution coating perovskite materials is deposited often by spin coating and heated to form a light absorbing crystal layer. Next, a whole transport layer is added to carry positive charges. Finally, a metal electrode is applied on top. The whole structure is sometimes encapsulated to protect it from moisture and light damage. So imagine solar panels you can roll up like a yoga mat. That's basically perovskite. Okay, so if perovskites are so amazing, why don't we see them everywhere yet? Well, there's always a catch, right? So here is the main challenge, stability. Perovskite materials degrade when exposed to moisture, heat, and UV lights, basically the things that solar panels deal with every single day. And that's a pretty big deal when you're trying to install something on your roof that needs to last 25 to 30 years. The lead problem is another issue. Most high efficiency perovskite contain lead. It's a tiny amount, but still lead in your rooftop panels, that raises eyebrows from both regulators and homeowners. But here's the good news. Researchers are developing encapsulation techniques to protect these cells and experimenting with lead-free alternatives. This progress is just the last five years has been pretty insane. We are seeing stability improvements that could make these commercially viable much sooner than expected. But another question is when. So let's talk about what's happening right now. So these aren't just prototypes or experiments. Perovskite solar is already being deployed in creative and pretty interesting way. Already in use in Poland, my home country, company called Sao Saula Technology. You would think that as a Polish person, I would be able to properly pronounce the name of this company. But they partner with Skanska to install perovskite solar films on office windows. These semi-transparent panels generate power while still letting the light in, effectively turning buildings into vertical solar farms. And this isn't a small pilot. These windows are already powering parts of the building and they're doing it without taking up any roof space, which is usually Usually the biggest problem with skyscrapers, they are pretty tall and skinny, so not much of roof space is ever available. Another one is about solar cars. Lightweight and flexible Dutch company Lightyear previously developed a solar powered car that could drive over 40 miles a day using built in solar cells. And they're explored perovskite materials because they are lightweight, flexible, and more efficient in low light conditions. Basically perfect for curved car surfaces. Another car-like company is Aptera Motors. I'm sure you guys heard about that one. They have been exploring perovskite coatings for their ultra-efficient vehicles with their solar EVs expected to debut this year, 2025. Now, thanks to perovskite's flexibility and low manufacturing temperatures, entire solar panels can be literally printed onto thin films. Think about emergency shelters, military camps, or rural villages where you basically just unroll a solar mat and power what's needed. These panels are being used in prototype form for disaster relief and rural electrifications across Southeast Asia and Africa. Oxford PV in the UK is developing tandem cells where perovskite layers sit on top of a conventional silicon. These can achieve over 30% efficiency compared to around 2022 from the traditional solar panels I mentioned before. Now they're expected to hit the commercial market very, very soon with recent patent licensing agreements indicating significant steps towards broader adoption and a slot into the solar infrastructure. Same size, same mounts, but match more power.
Big players like Oxford PV, Sowell Technology, and even the US Department of Energy are investing heavily into perovskites. We're not talking about 10 years from now. Some of these are already in pallet production. And honestly, as someone who's been tracking solar technology for years, the speed of development here is very, very fast. Now, here's the bottom line. If perovskites can be made durable and scalable, and all signs point to an answer that's yes, we could see a world where solar energy is basically everywhere, even without the 30% tax credit, as the current tax bill implies. <laughs> now, solar would become more affordable, part of all buildings, cars, even weirder applications like clothes, backpacks, etc. Solar won't just be something you bolt onto your roof. It'll be woven into everyday life. And this could accelerate global transition to clean energy faster than anyone imagined if those roadblocks are removed. For homeowners like you and me, this could mean more affordable solar installation, higher efficiency solar panels, basically generating more power in the same space and completely new applications we haven't even thought of yet. Perovsky solar cells aren't just a lab experiment anymore. They became real, visible and usable in the world around us. From solar windows and skyscrapers to rollerboard panels and disaster zones, this technology is truly on the move. And here's the thing. This really is just the beginning. The solar industry is changing faster than most people realize. I'm looking forward to continuing to bring you updates on this solar breakthrough, testing new technologies, and helping you understand how clean energy is shaping our future with or without the solar tax credit. So if you're into renewable energy or energy independence, or you just wanna be ready for the next big shift, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It really, really helps me grow my channel significantly. So what do you guys think about this perovskite technology? Are you excited about flexible solar panels? Are you more concerned about the stability challenges? Again, make sure to let me know down in the comments below. That is it for today. I will see you in my next video. Bye.